Hi, I'm Pete from the Pete and Reed Show, and this is Jerry Sokolowski, the tallest man in Canada. Jerry, I gotta apologize. It's a two person show. Reed didn't what show up. What the heck is that? Man, what the heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Your legs. What the heck? Reed? Holy what shit! What the heck is that? What are you doing down there? I thought that was the entrance. It's not the entrance. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Do you need a break? Oh, I definitely need a break. Come back with more of Jerry on the Pete and Reed Show. And welcome back to the Pete and Reed Show. We're here at the Skyline Tower live. Beautiful location in yeah, Niagara Falls yeah. with Jerry Sokolowski. Looking forward to talking to you all about being the tallest man in the world. Pete Reed, thank you so much for both having me on the show right now today. Now, you know, I want to clarify something because I, before I met you, I read about you on Wikipedia, I read about you on this, I read about you in the Brantford Examiner, which yeah. had like, th in the same article, three seven, different seven, heights. Seven, eight, seven, one and a half, you know. Yeah, so like, what is it? Seven foot seven, you know. Seven foot seven, which is a, is a world I was with record. Shaq last weekend, uh, with the All-Star Weekend, and he was up to my mouth, his top of his head. So, Shaq. Yeah, he's a friend of mine since I was 13. So. You know, it's funny, because I got sent the picture, right? And I went, oh yeah, he, he looks big, and then I went, Shaq, Shaq, what well, Shaq looks small. Huge. Seven one. Shaq yeah. is seven one. He's a nice guy. He calls me the big guy when he comes when it comes to Toronto. Oh, so. that's funny. <laughs> so yeah. now, how did that happen? How did it happen that you nobody has the right height for you? It was a miscommunication between Wikipedia and the guy from uh, France. It was uh, it was invented, I did, but I, I've been listed on Toronto Sun seven foot six, seven foot seven as well without shoes. Seven foot six and seven foot seven with shoes. So. Didn't you have uh, Guinness World Book of Records for since, your height? Uh, all the way since 2007, I was uh, recorded by Guinness Book of World Records seven foot five back then. But I've grown an inch when I was 31 to 32 to seven still, six seven still growing. Still growing. seven seven. So you know, I'm 32 wow. years old. So and, wow. and how much do you weigh? A good day 450, a bad day 500. You don't need a little bit too much. <laughs> 450 to 500. Wait a minute. Yeah. 50 right, pounds. So, <laughs> so what would you eat in a day? About three to five thousand calories. A good a, a good day, five thousand. Maybe a bad day, ten thousand. Depends. You know? So, do you eat a whole pizza by yourself? <laughs> I used to eat two pizzas like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's you crazy. Know. Your mom must have had mom. a hard time giving birth to you. My mom had. Did a you come out like five feet? <laughs> For two weeks, <laughs> I had a cesarean. my mother had a cesarean. Uh, my mom knew I was going to be one baby. She basically told me to, you know, I was going to be a cesarean. I just lost my line there, <laughs> right, running it anyways. But yeah, but basically, I had to become. Uh, it was one baby, and they, my, my mom thought they were, you know, knew I was going to be one baby, but they thought I was going to be twins. You know, well, I guess yeah. so. I I think more like uh, what you, what's five, <laughs> five or six, <laughs> five. <laughs> all Good in one. Or something. Yeah. Wow. And how big are your hands and feet? Because I heard you, were, you have the biggest 13 hands. 13 inch hand span, which is, uh, wow. you can check it out. World's <laughs> largest hands by Guinness Book of Records, you know. Now, wow. yeah, yeah, now so. You can almost put two hands there, double. That's <laughs> so what's the distance? This way is 13 inches, this way is 11, 11 and a half inches. So. Unbelievable. So yeah. holding a basketball, and I understand that you, <laughs> you uh, played a little basketball. I played with some day. great guys. I was in the NBA draft 2004, 2002. I got to play with Chris Paul, Magic Johnson, and some other wow. guys in the NBA training. I got to train with some top 50 Hall of Famers in the NBA as well. Brad Rasmussen out of Seattle, Washington, very good friend of mine, helped me out and tutored me. Basically, the year I went to the draft, from, ten, from uh, nine months, I basically went from 500 pounds. I had a problem with my liver. I had liver failure. Alonzo Mourning, the same time, he was guiding me through that. But as well, I was training 10 and a half hours a day, basically, and I basically became from a 500-pound man right into a 414 mile sh in shape, 300 pounds as a kid, you know. Wow. Yeah. Now, now I know you were uh, 27 inches when you were born, 9.9 .9 pounds. Which, I mean, that's, that's big, that's, but that's yeah, not huge. I had a nine-pound eight baby, so I'm, I'm thinking, wait. <laughs> no. Nine pounds nine ounces, 27 inches long. So if you look at this, this is uh, 26. Add an inch to that, you know. So it's me born. Big, big Every week I came out of the hospital, I gained I gained one pound, and I gained one inch out of the hospital. Now, when did your parents know that you were going to be a big boy? My mom knew before I was born. Really? You know, they, uh, when they did the the baby scope to make sure, you know, to show the big X-ray, my mom knew I was going to be one baby. The doctors thought differently. They thought I was going to be twins. You know, twin babies, tall. Yeah, it's pretty Can you cool. Imagine getting a kick from him inside. <laughs> <laughs> My mother gained a hundred no, pounds. Really with big me, feet. So. <laughs> yeah. So now let's go up 
to grade four, way up oh, to grade boy. four. <laughs> and how big, do you, how big do you think he was? Well, average height at grade four would be, I don't know, four feet, maybe, maybe. Could yeah. I ask you how tall you are? What? Could I ask you how tall you are? I'm 6'3". I was uh, your height when I was like in between going on 9 and 10 years old. I was 6 feet at the age of grade 4. Grade 4, I was 6 feet tall. 245 pounds, size 15 shoe, you know. In grade 4? Yeah. <laughs> so I have to ask then, if you, you were so much bigger, you were like a high school student in grade 4. By the time I was in grade 4, I, got, I was getting even interest from the Toronto Raptors when they first came to Toronto. I was 6 feet tall. <laughs> as a point, I could be a play point guard, you know, NBA. <laughs> In the two years of going to grade five and six, I went to six eleven. You know, six foot eleven by the grade six. Now you're six feet tall in grade four. Like, do you think you're abnormally big and that you're going to get bigger? I was most most men. You know, yeah, <laughs> by the time I'm sure. grade four, I was like the man most most generous men. You know, and six feet tall is tall for a man. You know? Now, yeah. puberty wise too. Oh yeah, I was wow. like every I was tested for bone aging growth hormones at uh, Toronto. I um, was at uh, Sick Kids Hospital. I was tested for bone age. Everything was normal. But uh, I was just bigger than everybody else, but naturally normal, not versus like a pituitary gland giant or natural giant, you know. I was a natural giant. We're, uh, we're talking to Jerry Sokolowski, Canada's largest and tallest man with the second largest hands in the world. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back more with Jerry in just a minute. We're talking to Jerry Sokolowski, Canada's tallest man. Uh, we're trying to find out what it's like to be seven foot seven in a six foot person's world. Six foot and less, basically. Yeah, right? for sure. <laughs> I want to know, what was your family life growing up? Like, was your mom and dad that tall? And my, uh, my mother was, uh, was an athlete during school. She was five foot seven. My dad in the 60s and 70s was six foot seven. Basically, he was six foot seven. He had his back fused in the last few years where he turned to six foot five. Two discs were spine fused and uh, got, came back you know, to six foot five. But in his time, he was the biggest around in the whole time. So, did your mom and dad do like music or dancing or anything? Like in your household, what was there something <laughs> besides sports? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, mostly, uh, my dad was a f worked since he was 13 years old. My father ended up becoming, you know, I learned a lot of inspiration, drive, and passion for my father. You know, my dad became 13. He was, he became, learned how to drive his truck on his own without even doing that. He became a truck driver, working, he had a family. My father had seven children in total, five by, two by my mom and five by five different women. So that was different. My dad's one of my best role models, but my mom is like the leader of the whole family, you know. Dorothy and my dad, Jerry, Jerry Jr., myself, so. Now, Obviously, at your size, you're going to be a basketball player, right? I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Even since nine years old. Yeah. Probably would have been a great hockey player, too. You would give him Chara. Yeah. I played a lot of hockey. I I couldn't, really? But actually, I could not play hockey because of, by the age of nine years old, Bauer custom made me through the Lions Club. They actually made me a custom pair of size, skate size 15. That's the biggest they could make. Wow. Bauer. And that was sponsored at $900 for one pair. That wow. was the highest they could go custom made. Now, right now, your size? <laughs> size 22, 23. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just beats my size. Cut kick. the side off a cow and <laughs> make yourself a pair of shoes. Strap them right? on. Yeah, that's a <laughs> no. Now here's a great thing because I, I heard this about you that you love baseball. And I, I love baseball. A good friend of mine is Mr. Jose Batista from the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, yeah. Good of friend of mine, and I've got to meet Joe Carter and a lot of different baseball players. But my best friend is Jose Batista from the Toronto Blue Jays. I actually played baseball when I was in grade. Uh, Nine, I was recruited by the Blue Jays and Yankees. I went to one of their farm scouting system games uh, to be. I was a pitcher, 95 mile an hour curveball. Wow. I was uh, 15 years old. Now, yeah. okay, let's, let's take it at 15. What do you think you'd be throwing at now if you'd been practicing? I would say 70, 85, 90. I guess still do it. I don't I have heart, you know, so I got to do I'm it. I'm thinking you know? more like. 125, 130, <laughs> seeing the gloves smoke. Okay, now that we've got baseball. The ball disappeared in my hand, though. Did you ever think about doing um, <laughs> football? I tried football. You know, I played football, but it's bad on the knees. It's a rough game. You know, it's, uh, I have a lot of friends that have played football, NFL, CFL, from the U.S. and from Canada. But a lot of my friends are from, you know, football. But I, 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 my major was basketball at the time. My basketball coach was president of Basketball Canada, 18 years old. I had to be a legal guardian. They could sign me off because I went to a high-performing school for basketball. So basically, I took off the team with a signature of my coach and my parents. So, so picture this, Rita. Yeah. You're on the tennis court. I actually played you tennis got, too. Yeah, you got your tennis racket and no, you look across. I have a funny go, story to tell you about the tennis. Right, right, right <laughs> yeah. the other way. I made the uh, grade 11 team for the senior team of high school and basically 
they told me the last tryout, I basically couldn't be a tennis player because I broke three rackets by just whacking the ball like a side hit. And I broke three rackets, the ball went right through as I was hitting like this. The ball went through three times in a row. I lost almost six, seven hundred dollars in rackets. <laughs> they, they stopped it. They said, sir, you've been X, gone. Now, now, <laughs> now when you play tennis, right, you, know. you can only use one size racket. Like you can yeah. have one made for your size, right? Because <laughs> then you kill somebody, right? <laughs> Boom, off to the club. The right? <laughs> highest club, you know. <laughs> golf, did you play any golf? I never tried it, no. Yeah. Mini golf, it's about it's one of my favorite you sports. Have mini really golf. Long clubs. I really like mini, I really like to be honest, I really like mini golf, you know. Mini <laughs> it's pretty golf. Cool. <laughs> I can't see you. You know, I can't standing on a mini golf course. Fingers is about as long <laughs> as a stick. <laughs> so as you uh, as you grew, uh, at sixteen, how big were you? Sixteen years old, I was just over seven foot three four, actually. Seven foot three, seven foot four. Now, see, I knew, and I'm sure you were the same, at 15 years old, actually at 14 years old, all I could think about was driving. I want to drive, I want to get my license. Of course. Right? My high school career, where I was 15 to 19, 20 years old, I was always focused on basketball. I was doing from everywhere, from school to basketball practice, back home sleep, and I'd, be, I'd never have a chance to get a chance to drive. But custom-made car, when I was going for the 2004 NBA draft, basically, I couldn't get a car to pull the seat up out of the bolts and to get move it three inches back, the Hummer, at the custom dealership, it would cost $10,000. And I just said, no, I don't want to do that. That's not me. It's, you know. Wow. I have to, I'll sit in the back seat before I sit and make a custom car. You know, You're I don't kidding. need that kind of expense, you know. <laughs> so, so what do you fit in now? A uh, taxi, limousine, but I'm not that kind of person. I like to be in, you know, buses or public transit. I've traveled to LA, USA, Canada, Republic all through public transit. transit. It's, it's probably, you know, it's the best thing. You must get a lot of people paying attention to you on public transit. For the health of my, my economy, yeah. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> you know. We're talking to Jerry Sokolowski, who is the tallest um, man in Canada. And uh, coming up next, after we take this break, yeah. we're going to talk about how he works with children. And we're going to talk about bullying as well, So, yeah. uh, which I think is a great thing to talk about nowadays. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to the TV Show with Jerry Sokolowski. Thanks so much for being here at the Skylon Tower. What a beautiful place. We had dinner together. Yeah. I love the food so much I had to kiss my own lips. <laughs> um, of course, course we're in lot. the revolving dining room going it's around. One hour, nice circle. trip around yeah, there. We had some it? great food and it was oh, amazing great time. Great thank you so much, guys. And You're thank welcome. you, Skyline Hotel. Now, we want to talk about something that's important to all of our hearts <laughs> here. And, um, you know, bullying. I mean, I know I was bullied as a kid and it's because I was Ukrainian background with a different name, yeah. darker skin. And I mean, I took some serious abuse. And right. Every, I think everybody does in certain ways, but some kids get it more than others. And I think you, that probably was your case. I mean, you're so big. I'm sure people that were older than you wanted to it pound was, you down. It was a lot, even from the early age of seven years, years old, in the swimming pool with my mother and father standing by the sides watching me you know my family was attacked many times but as well I was in a swimming pool in the shallow end at seven years old I should have been in the shallow end I was just almost five feet tall I still I was still young didn't know I wasn't coordinated as much as I was now for sports you know going into the swimming pool and I'd see some kids in the swimming pool trying to call me to the deep end next thing you know they came behind me two kids came and put me in the deep end and tried to dunk four kids actually dunk my head under the water and tried to drown me it was a horrific experience. I always remember it in my life, you know. Do you like swimming now? I love swimming. I could swim. I swim like a fish. If I, I go to water parks all the time, I go swimming, you know, I'm like a fish, you know. <laughs> now, because of your size, did you get challenged? Giant fish, maybe a shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. I was thinking like a big air mattress yeah. or something. Marine yeah. land. Does he have a hole in the back of his neck? <laughs> <laughs> did you find that kids tried to take, take you on physically too? And I'm sure they wanted uh, about five or six. All the way since I was seven years old, about five feet tall, all the way from up to high school, and even now still, you know, in different security, different stuff, positions I do in my life. You know. how, how did you get past that? How did you... I always had an inner drive, you know. I'd like to be able to relate to the new kids in the coming up, coming generation, you know, basically, that's why I've done, started public speaking, but in, from inside your heart, you drive in th to your mind and then drive outside and build a wall and force full strong through the wall. To be able to get, build a wall, you have to be able to break it down and go through it, you know, for, for a bully, they have to be hurting to be, uh, to be able to pick on you. You know, they have, a, they have something bothering them inside, you know, yeah. Now, you, we talked about physical bullying, but yeah. I mean, 
let's talk about mental, mental bullying, yeah. cyber cyber bullying. You know, cyber bullying. They can bully you right through the computer. They don't need to. They don't need to be in front of your face. It's not confrontational between two people. You know, it's like cyber bullying. They can say whatever they want. You know, but no now police can do it now. The police can get them. You know, eventually yeah. if it's, if it's threatening or very you know hazardous to people. But it's not. You know, it's very easy to do that now. So much social media and stuff like that as well. It's very, you know, it's just hard. You well, know. it's hard to say to somebody to their face what you really think of them. It's been but going it's on for generations. It. Yeah. It's been going on for generations as far as, you know, people, you can call you on the phone, even from the phone, you know, even till now with all the social media out now, it's out there. It's so easy for people to be bullying people, you know, but it's, it's not, it's not good at all. It doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me at all, you know. And, you know, there's, there's, uh, what I've seen from bullying in my life, uh, and we from the time I was young through, you know, coaching and stuff like that, where bullying happens in a lot of sports teams, yeah. there's a lot of that type of thing. Is you're one of two people. You're the, the person that fights back eventually and says, I've had yeah. enough, or you're the other person that it's, just closes in and never recovers from it. Doesn't it's talk, really, really sad. or it goes to an extreme where you can't even, you know, you just you go right through the wall, knock anybody over, you know, push, you know, stop anybody, you know. But it's wonderful that you're talking to kids in schools about Yeah, this. I've just started this week, actually, here in Niagara Falls. You know, it's amazing, too. I've always loved kids. I love to have a family. I have to have, love to be around kids, and it just inspires me. You know, I like to see, and I also like to help and give back to the kids, you know, because I've gone such a through. I've running also a movie about that. Eventually, it'll come out about my sports career and my life. You know, a movie where it's, like, just about kids and try to teach them the right way to, to go about being in sports and they can give them their own opportunity with their family recognition without agents and different stuff. Even through basketball, I experienced a lot of bullying where agents tried to take 10%, three per, it's supposed to be 3% on a contract, they would try to take 10% and 30% on a Europe contract, you know, so it's a lot of bullying in business as well, you know, for so kids. So when you're, when you're talking to the children, like, what, how do you start, what do you talk about, you start about talking about bullying and then where do you I go? I start talking talk about my introduction to myself and then we uh, you know, do some questions and answers, basically where you know, about cyberbullying, bullying, and all different kind of aspects of, you know, how it's not related to being able to be in the professional world of life, you know, as far as being an entrepreneur, a business person as well, you know. We stop, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't sit well in that field, so why should it sit well when you grow up as a kid? You know, it's a pro life is a process, and you go through it, and you have to get through it and build a wall and be the best person. That's what you owe it to yourself to be the tall, you know, whether you be the tallest man in Canada or somebody like everybody, you know, actor, famous actor, business people. The kids got to be start from when ground up, you know, it's how to build a house, you know, from start, bottom to the top, you know. Yeah. Not so, the top to yeah. the bottom. So Always the top, the, bottom yeah. to the top. Yeah. In your estimation, though, when, when somebody is starting to really feel the effects of bullying, what, what do you suggest they do? What should they do? Always stand your ground. Be strong. Never, never give in, you know. Know your inner self. Know your inner self as far as, you know, who you are, what you want to become. Knowing yourself and having a strong, you know, heart, you know, always strong heart, strong mind, strong body, and strong person, you know, it's, it's nice, amazing to be, you know, for kids. Positive attitude. The four strongs, you know. <laughs> You're watching the uh, Pete Reed Show. We're here with Jerry Sokolowski, and coming up next, we're going to talk about the famous actor. And welcome back to the Pete Reed Show with Jerry Sokolowski. Thanks so much for being with us. I want to know what it's like for you to travel, say, in, in an airplane. What, what happens wow. there? The airplane experiences, you know, you're going all over the world and from Canada, U.S. to international. It's like, you know, in the international flights, most of it is like three seats where I have to sit and crouch against the window of the plane and hopefully, you know, nothing happens. Basically sit and put a belt on me around the one seat and basically just put my legs out during a can, you know, to keep myself, my back. I have to stand up during the flight a lot. You know, it takes three seats. They don't charge me. They're very accommodating in that sense, you know. <laughs> so you, you have know. to put your feet across the seats? Across three seats, so you imagine here and here. Yeah. I'd be sitting here in the window. Right. And basically my legs are across the seat until flight is in the air and basically resumed, you know, through being on a level without turbulence, of Anybody's course. Anybody banging yeah. your feet as they're taking the car <laughs> I have yeah. to always duck. <laughs> Bangs his Hurt body. Hurt the side of my leg because I'm tiking in my leg in the, in the seats. You know, it's very... <laughs> and I, oh. and Anybody behind only... me as well because I have to put the seat back to rest because I need to stretch, you know. <laughs> I can only imagine you um, trying to stand up in that. I mean, come on. That's just, you... It's not that tall. No, I mean, my head's almost no. touching. So. Especially when you walk in the door of the airplane to board the plane. It's very, like, it's about here on me. Oh, so I'm wow. like, hello, anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> 
So, I mean, you've done a lot of flying, and of course, yeah. you're an actor now, and you've done yeah. a, a first-rate movie called David and Goliath, where you played, of course, <laughs> David. No, I mean Goliath. <laughs> Capital G, Goliath. Now, yeah. I, got, I saw the movie. I saw it today, and uh, well shot. Beautiful it's location. You know, it was a $50 million budget movie produced by Tom, Tim Che and the River Rain Productions. It was uh, shot in where they, basically where they shot Star Wars in Tunisia, one hour from Tunisia is Hamamaret, the village where the revolution happened in 2010. Basically, the movie was shot. The first day there was there, there was a Roman coin found. It was a blessing, you know. To go over there wow. in a third world country, basically Tunisia, North Africa, was the moment I got off the airplane, basically, it was like, I went to go get $100 Canadian change in two doners. Every doner is about a 1,300 to one ratio, Canadian dollar wow. to 1,300 wow. doner. So for $100 Canadian, you get about 130,000 diner mm -hmm. of Tunisia, you know. It, was so, a, it was, uh, took me two hours to get out of the airport where people are just taking my photos on a six oh, spin guess. spindle, you know, it's cool. So let's go back to the gold coin. Yeah. Did anybody take the gold coin? No, I was stayed back in its original roots. Would we? I think, I think we would have taken it. The actual yeah. first day I was on set, basically, um, it was a night scene. It was a bonfire scene, kind of like Survivor, something out of Survivor, basically was a war scene where there was a fight scene in the movie. I think you've seen it in the movie if you've yes. seen the movie. But basically, I got, I, there was a scorpion the first day I got dressed. There was a scorpion, and I go, what is that to the guy, the assistant director, uh, you know, coordinator for wardrobe? What is that? I thought it looked about that long, it was a cockroach, basically, and it turned into a, it was a scorpion. Wow. It was headed for my foot, and I'm like, I'm glad I moved. the guy picked it up by its waist, shot it like Goliath, uh, like David <laughs> did the Goliath, 50 feet out, you know, and then the first night scene I had, basically, it was like, um, under the rocks, there's a lot of rocks and a bonfire. There's a lot of snakes. The weather's oh. so hot there, there's a lot of snakes around there. And I almost got bit by a snake. I heard the rattling of a snake, and I almost got bit by a snake on the first night scene. Now, did you uh, have an acting coach? Because I noticed your voice changed, but I was, I, I was impressed. Like, seriously, when you talk to Jerry, and I got to tell him, when you get to watch the movie and watch him act, you're going, hey, this guy's got it. I haven't seen it. I just wanted to know, did you have the little skirt thing happening? I had the whole, uh, the whole metal, the chain, the, yeah. you know, the Goliath, so, uh, the spear. Did it everything. cover the glands? That's all I want to know. That's the hands. Oh, the big, oh, yeah, the hands. Excuse me? <laughs> he had the largest. He has the largest. I beg your pardon? I thought it went with the hands. And hands? Everything. No, there's hands? something to do with that. Is that true, though, with the hands? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the hands do the man. <laughs> now, the movie, of course, I, it was... It was it, $50 million yeah. budget. And Tim tried to keep it as Tim true Chay, to the Bible as possible. You know, Tried to keep it a real film, not like Exodus or these other films that are out right now, faith-based films on David Goliath's story. You know, he uh, he tried to model it as true as he could to the film, you know. And I understand Hollywood From the Hollywood shunned, sense. Right? It, it was very shunned. shunned because, you know, some movies just don't go over well, faith-based faith -based films don't mostly don't get investments. Well, I thought you it was know? a great movie and it's beautiful. You gotta see it because it's see beautifully it. shot. It was, uh, the movie premiere was in the Cannon Theater in uh, Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood. Very, very nice. A good friend of mine, who's a friend of mine, for, went to go see it um, from Millennium Films, a good friend of mine, Lottie Ramadi. Mm -hmm. He's one of the executive producers for the top 300 film, one of the f top 300 films in Hollywood. Went to see it on my behalf, because even the producer, something happened and I couldn't attend. So. Now let's move on to charity. Mm -hmm. How important is charity to you? Charity has even been in my, it's been instilled in me since I came home from the NBA draft, seeing a lot of kids through basketball. You know, I've, I started doing charity events with best football players for Make-A-Wish Children Foundation. With uh, John Avery, I started some different charity. I started my own charity, JS Group uh, Charity Foundation is what I started. You know, I didn't finalize it, but I got through. You know, I did some events for kids. I donated to Make-A-Wish Foundation, even since I was 17 years old. So what's in the future? In the future, entrepreneur. Big things, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I can only aim for the top as I'm Jerry, you know. Yeah. Be true to myself, Jerry, you know. In for the top in entrepreneur business. I'm trying to go into real estate. Eventually, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. You know, I like to be maybe eventually coaching in basketball or something with basketball. But I love you know just being around kids and being, I'm also creative writing a short documentary and a TV reality show with my team producers. So. What's going on? Yeah, good for you. I love it. I, 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 thank you so much. I can actually double take it. Right now. <laughs> yeah, and we're still too yeah. small. Exactly. Still too small. Thanks so much, Gary. And thank you so much for having me. And you know what? Thank you, Skyline Tower, oh, for allowing us to For the it. food, for the drinks, yeah. for letting us be here. Great time. Thanks so much. It was a great time. And join us again on the